Let's pray. Heavenly Father, still our hearts. Help us to know that you are in control. Help us to know that only you can make us saints. In your name we pray. Amen. This is All Saints Sunday. And the passage that was uh, read a few moments ago by Eric, let me read it again. It's from the first chapter, or the first John chapter 1, chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Beloved, we are God's children. Now and what we will be has not yet appeared, but we know that when the... uh, When he appears, we shall be like him because we shall see him as he is. And everyone with him shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as is pure. There was a um, man, two men, who lived in this community, a lot like uh, uh, Sulphur Springs. And these two men were brothers, and they were known as the worst that they could possibly be. They were just always doing things like stealing, fraudulently taking land for themselves. It was, there was just no stopping them. And on one occasion, the one brother died. And when he died, the remaining brother went to the pastor and to make funeral arrangements. And at the end, when he was fi- almost finished, he said, oh, by the way, pastor, he said, could you call my brother a saint during your eulogy? And the, the pastor just sort of shook his head and said, oh, I don't know about that. He said, well, pastor, we have $25,000 in our family, and we're going to give it to the church if you could only call him a saint. And the, the brother went all away, and the pastor went away. And the day of the funeral came, and when the funeral was, was taking place, the eulogy was also taking place, and the pastor said, you know, he said, the decedent here was an awful man. He stole, he did everything possible to make life miserable. He cheated on his income tax. He did everything that you and I would call awfully awful and terrible. But he said, just to get the record straight, he said, today, he said, this man here in the coffin was a saint compared to his brother. Saints. We have saints in our country, in our community, in our congregation. There are many of us who are saints. But you see, the key for understanding sainthood is to understand that there is no comparison. God does not compare one brother with another, one husband with another, one, you can go on and on. No. The comparison between one and another person is exactly the opposite of what it means to be saints. It's exactly the opposite because it focuses on us rather than on God. Theodore Roosevelt once said that to compare one another with another is a recipe for lack of joy. And one of the ways in which we can so often fail is by trying to compare one person with another. We do it in sports. We do it in preaching. We do it in congregations that are willing to uh, engage in competitive sports like 
throwing darts. But now I'm getting on holy ground and I better get off of it. I'm not against comp competition. But I do want us to recognize how absolutely significant Christ's statement is. Christ is there and he is basically saying to all of us that we are his children. Now I know children can also compete with one another and compare themselves with one another. But the point that this text makes is that there is no sense in doing so because we're all children of God. In fact, in the first chapter of the gospel according to John, we will again read the fact that we are children of God when we receive Christ in our lives. You are a child of God. What more could you possibly want? What more could we, you and I possibly ask for than to be a child of God? And this text, this text in the first John, the epistle to first John, points that out in different ways. You are children of God. We all are. And it's important for us to remember that what kind of love the Father has given us that we should be called children of God. Now you might say, well, so what? What good does that do to me, for me? And that's one possible way that you could do this, that you could take this message. But you can also stand up inside of your, or bring your heart to the surface, so to speak, and allow others to recognize that we're all children, that we all are people of God, that we are all people whom God loves. And so we come to the text again, whoever does not love abides on death. Well, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer, and you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. But you and I can abide in him. We can be assured of our assurance as long as we recognize one thing. We are not saints because we can compare ourselves to somebody worse or somebody better. We're not saints because we can say to our neighbors, well, I can go to church every Sunday, but you don't do that. No. We are saints for one reason. A saint is a forgiven sinner. Paul writes that in different ways. Luther wrote it in different ways. You and I must acknowledge our sinfulness before God, because that's our qualification to be a saint. There was a mother and her six-year-old daughter who were walking through a museum. They had planned this. They were enjoying their walk, and suddenly the girl says, what's that man over there? And she said, well, that's St. Peter. And then they walked on a little farther and said, the little girl said, well, what's that man over there? She said, that's St. John. And they walked on a little farther and they came to another picture in a window depicting another person. She said, who is that? Well, that's St. Paul. She says, I get it. A saint is somebody who allows the light to shine through him. You see, does the light shine through you? Does the light shine through you in a way that will allow others to see that light and praise God for whom he has created? A saint is someone who allows the light of God to shine through him and through him and through you through each one of us because we have all been saved by God's love. Amen.